Thank you. Next item, 6.01, is related to a comprehensive redistricting update, and the update information is minimal here, given that there have not um, been any developments in redistricting since we were last together, and you received an update from Mr. Sorensen when he indicated that um, meetings that were imminent of the committee had been um, postponed given the COVID-19 health crisis. So I share that as the only update and um, offer an opportunity to hear from the board on this topic. Um, I can start to my left. Um, any um, questions, current Senator Ms. Atkins? Um, I do want to make a comment for those that are listening and spent a tremendous amount of time in, in helping us um, in, in our decision-making process as we all have looked at, at numbers and heard feedback from, from many individuals. I want uh, folks to know um, that all the feedback and all the work uh, that you've done thus far is appreciated. And again, um, these are unprecedented times and we are going to collectively as a board, I, I believe uh, all of my colleagues do agree that um, we are still learning how to move forward. But the good news is that all the feedback that has been provided, whether you're on the committee or whether you showed up at the monthly meetings or whether you use the other method of supplying your, your thoughts through either forms, know that we are informed. We are informed from facts. We are informed from the compassion that each of us felt as you spoke here. And I, I just wanted to share that because it's important for all of you to hear that as we move forward, uh, whether the committee meets again, whether we have another monthly meeting or not, where you can come and share your voice, know that you have been heard over the past couple months. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, I second what Ms. Atkins had said about just the tremendous work that the committee has done as well as our staff, um, the tremendous amount of feedback we have gotten from the community that we have each poured over hundreds of emails, met with constituents, um, and listened attentively. Um, there is so much information and so much data that we have poured over. I will voice that I do have a concern about drawing this process out uh, an additional six or more months. Um, this, is, this whole process has caused a lot of discord and a lot of disruption. I think families want to know where their children are gonna go to, go to school. Um, and so um, if we are gonna move forward, that redistricting would take place in, tw in the fall of 2021, I think it's imperative that we move forward and make that decision. Um, if the board feels like to scrap the whole process, that's another discussion, um, w w which I, but if we're gonna move forward on the timeline for redistricting to start when it was slated to start, I, I would like to see us come up with a way to make that decision so that our families don't continue to be in limbo uh, when this is already um, such an uncertain time for so many other reasons. Um, I know families have reached out and they, they want to know where their children are going to be going to school. Thank you so much. Ms. Ogborn, do you want to add some comments? I, I do. Um, I will uh, echo what um, Marcy and Alicia said. I think it's important um, that we acknowledge the, the committee has done a great job, but I think under the circumstances, they're, um, they're not able to meet, obviously. So we have two options in front of us that the committee has developed, and it would seem to me that the more judicious thing to do would be to let those two maps stand as they are and go ahead and move those to the board and staff to continue to work on as we can under the circumstances and try to make a decision based on those two maps that the committee developed by you know our meeting in may or june as as we had hoped to do i agree with marcy i think putting this off to the fall it just is is problematic in a lot of ways. People want to know where their kids are going to school, but um, it's more than that. In the fall, kids will be making decisions for the 
next year looking into courses they might take, that kind of thing that varies by school. But I think dragging this out is not in the best interest of our community. It, it has been a long haul so far, and I think we have two maps. It's time to let the committee just turn them over to the board and staff and let us move forward with what we've got. Thank you, Ms. Ogborn. Ms. Uh, Kinsella? Yes, I'd like to echo the sentiments of Ms. Atkins, Mrs. Shea, and Mrs. Ogburn. Um, first, I'd like to thank again the staff and the committee who have worked tirelessly uh, for six months prior to this health crisis um, and have produced two viable options. Um, I just want to thank you for your commitment to the process. And at this time, I believe that um, well, firstly, redistricting falls under board responsibility. And I do believe it's our duty to continue the committee's work um, and try to bring about some resolution, reducing stress during what I believe is already a stressful time for so many of our community members. Um, so I, I support what Mrs. Ogburn said regarding the two options. I believe we have plenty of feedback on those options. We've had survey after survey, email after email. We've had public hearings. Um, and I think we have all the information we need from those two options to make the decision that we need to make as a board in May. Reverend Cooper, if you don't mind, I'm gonna jump in one more thing based on what Ms. Kinsella said. Yes, ma'am. Um, I think um, one thing we have to remember is yes, we do have two options, but the committee was just most recently working on a list of things that they knew they wanted to continue to attack in these two maps. That's also direction that we can use to continue their work, work with um, Matt Cropper and, and finish it up. Uh, that I think we just can't be, um, I know the committee might say, but wait a minute, we had a list. We had 14 things we were getting ready to vote on and give our opinion on. But those things we can take up and, um, and, and get that part of it done. I want to also chime in. But Marcy, I saw your hand up. I'll let you go okay? forward. Yes. Oh, thank you, Ms. Atkins. I would like to propose that um, I agree with Ms. Ogburn that we have two maps that the committee has um, developed. Um, I would like to propose that if we move forward with those two maps, that each of the five of us contact the committee members um, that are associated with the schools in our district um, so that they can give a one-on-one -on -one debrief to each of us um, about their, their thoughts uh, and, and what they think is unresolved um, so that they can kind of have a, a completion on their work and that they can pass it off to us that we can, we can run with. Ms. Atkins. And, and I would just want to say that I completely support um, the recommendations provided by Ms. Kinsella, Mrs. Ogburn, as well as Mrs. Shea. I think it's a, a wonderful idea to contact those on the committee so that they can provide whatever information they did not receive the opportunity to. I will share with you that I have already contacted the individuals on my committee as I sort of began and to realize that we are gonna have to move this forward. And I do like the idea of looking at the two viable maps that are already in place and amending those based on the information and conversations that we will receive when we contact committee members, and also amending them based on how our community feels and the feedback that we've received. We received a, a, a ton of information, and I think everyone up here is, is armed um, with what they need to move forward. So I do agree and support what's been shared. Yes, ma'am. I'd just like to add that I support the uh, reaching out to the committee members to wrap up any loose ends or comments that they may like to uh, put forth, especially after uh, last week's announcement about the change in capacity. Um, I'd like to know committee members' specific feedback, especially in the Brooklyn District, as to what their thoughts are and how they feel about that before decisions are made. Thank you. Well, thank you for you all's comments. Um, my comment is a little different. Um, I, I feel personally the business of the school division is moving forward. It's looking a little different. Um, but we're moving forward as a division. And I, I, I concur, we're so grateful and appreciative 
of all the persons that have volunteered time and given um, input and energy to this process. And, and I want to say first and foremost that redistricting is important. It is imperative. It is important. And investment so far in terms of time, money, and emotion needs to result in an outcome that best serves the needs of our community. But I think that we've got to ask ourselves a key question. Um, the world has been turned upside down. And the question I raised is now the right time to proceed. There's so much uncertainty in the region. People are scared why we move forward with the comprehensive redistricting and add to the unimaginable stress levels that some families are facing. I suggest, um, as far as my thought, and we're all entitled to our thoughts and whatever the, um, the consensus of the board is, it is, but I, I believe that it should be dialed back so that we can have a targeted approach um, we know that we need to fill holiday, for example, and we can further identify most overcrowded situations and address specific issues. Um, people have so much on their minds right now. I just don't feel comfortable personally moving forward when our community would be extremely limited in staying involved and the way we promised they would be. So that's kind of my perspective. So I'm glad that we all got to share our, our opinions today. So um, any other comments for redistricting? Okay. That being said, Madam Superintendent.